Hello everyone and welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. And myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Nearly forgetting to press the record button. Yes, there, he Steve. did. <laughs> yes, he did. Last <laughs> minute, just jumping to the machine he was. Good evening. It's Sunday the 16th of November and we have going to have a great show. We have a great guest on, uh, a chap called Dr. Joseph Chipalone, and who's in Australia and he's kindly got up real early in the morning. It's 5 o'clock a.m. over there. Uh, their time and he's uh it's been brilliant that he got up there and um he's on the show i'm going to be bringing him in in about five to ten minutes um and we have be having a great chat about what he thinks is going on globally and what he feels is going to happen information that he's got through so we'll talk to dr joseph in a minute but before we do that let's find out what the communication channels are yes communication channels please mary the communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Thank you, Mary. Yes, 046-927-1212 is the magic number for the studio this evening and every evening. If you're going to ring in from outside the Republic of Ireland, remember it's going to be 00353 Uh We also have the chat room as well on the website oimradio.com. Uh, we also have Facebook, the anti-social media, and uh, we have YouTube as well. If you log on to the website, which is again oimradio.com, you can find all the links there to uh, previous podcasts, plus the, the anti-social media, YouTube and the, the chat room as well. So yeah, there you go. All bases covered. Alan. Cheers, Steve. Okay, we're going to do Alan's week and Steve's week at the end of the show because we do want to get uh, Dr. Joseph Chipalone and, and um, speak to him about what he knows and the information he's come across. But before we do that, just a couple of things, the general information stuff. Social media has been hopping. My Facebook has been hopping. The amount of people I just feel waking up to what's going on at the moment in Ireland and globally but particularly in Ireland it's just amazing how people are just turning around all of a sudden and going I didn't realise this stuff was happening I didn't know this was going on etc etc and just the whole kind of wake up process has been phenomenal it's it's brilliant to see and it's it's needed badly because we need to actually people need to wake up and know what's going on and what these people in government are doing and it's only going to get worse if we don't kind of sort things out so brilliant to see people down the mansion house as well but one of the things that's gone around facebook and you probably some people probably seen it was a really bad photoshop picture of a chap uh, throwing a rock at a police car or a brick at a, at a police car now i did see the video and there was a guy on the video that fell on the ground and i did see a brick hitting the police car I did see the video, it was on the video, the Sunday World video that they had. But I'm still saying that the image, the still image that they had on Facebook was photoshopped. And pretty badly photoshopped. Did you see the image, Steve, have you? Yeah, I done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I did see it, yeah. Um, I seen some, some, some uh, people had measurements and stuff on it saying the guy, had, when, he, when he, was, he was floating above the air just like the brick and he had no leg or no foot or something like that. Was it Photoshop? I don't know. I can't tell. Well, it 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 looks to me, with you know, like I've used Photoshop on a regular basis, and it looks to me like a really bad Photoshop for some reason. Okay, Steve. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it seems that the 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 levels are a little bit low. Well, then you, you should be okay. If you there's a volume slider on the actual player, so if the levels low, just turn up the volume slider on the player on the website, and that might help you a little bit. Um, hope that helps because the, the volumes are all set as per normal so maybe it's just a volume slider there that needs to be put up um, now the other thing that we have to say is that we got contacted and we are told there is going to we can't go into detail where the location is or what's going on but um, people who are who want to protest or who want to make a difference and can, are able to protest there, it, there is going to be a message sent out on Facebook and social media either tonight or tomorrow regarding a location and if you can't make this location i'm sorry to say it's going to be last minute but if you can make this location it would be brilliant to see protesters there because this is this is going to be a major a major protesting event but unfortunately we can't give out the information at the moment we're under orders not to give it out so just keep an eye on facebook and social media and it will be sent out 
as soon as they the people want it released and if you are in that location by all means if you can get down get down there and um, do what you can um, but that's all I can really say about it but just keep an eye out there because it's going to be put out there either tonight or tomorrow just to let you know and the last thing is um, Steve if you just want to give a quick shout out to Mark and then we'll get Dr. Yeah. Joseph on as we, ha- as, we mentioned be- as we have mentioned before and it's getting closer to the date now we are in November but uh, international medium Mark Impey is going to be doing some platform work in the Old Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre in Old Castle. As I mentioned before, tickets are a mere five euros. Uh, you wouldn't get out for five euros these days. And money raised will be going to charity. Mark was on OIM and is a good friend of the of both of us here at OIM. And you can check out more about Mark on his website. That is circleofwhitelight.com. Circleofwhitelight.com. And Mark is an excellent medium. And it's, it, that, that, that event is going to be, it's a night not to be missed. And you can also check out more on the Facebook page, the Anti-Social Media, for the Old Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre. Again, just go to Facebook and type in Old Castle Spiritual and Healing Centre. You won't even have to type the whole lot in. Uh, the link will just pop up anyway. So again, that's the 30th of November. And I know, I, I think I asked you this last week, what's, what, what's the kickoff time for that? Kickoff time will be 7 o'clock. 7 in the p.m., yes. Grant, okay. And uh, before we get Dr. Joseph in, I would just like to say I'm not in front of Sam, but a big happy birthday to Steve. Tomorrow, Steve and George tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> How old are you now tomorrow? Yeah. 27, 28? 46. <laughs> 46, so, not 55. So happy birthday to Steve because it's Steve's birthday tomorrow. Happy but you can sing happy if you like. Happy birthday yeah, there to you. You were right, born on. in, is it? Okay, okay. Yeah. We won't, we won't no, go down that road. No. Okay, listen, we're going to bring our guest on now. We heard, I heard this guest, um, he was on with Detlev from Wake News Radio and United We Strike. And he did a fantastic interview. He had some fantastic information. And I thought, we'll have to get Dr. Joseph on and tell us, give us his take on what he feels is going on and why he feels is going on and where this information come from. Now, normally, we don't normally have questions. We kind of, you know, um, just... You know, wing it. We wing, wing it. it. Wing it most <laughs> of the time, as we normally do. But today, I, I wrote down a couple of questions because I think they're going to be quite relevant to what Dr. Joseph is going to talk to us about. So, and he is in Australia. Now, there might be a little bit of a delay. There might be a little bit of an echo, but please bear with us for that because it's just technology and that's just the way it works. But good evening, Dr. Joseph. How are you doing? Uh, Good evening, Ellen. I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Brilliant. Thank you for getting up so early in the morning at 5 a.m. in Australia to come on the show. It's much appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, before we kind of get into things, people who have never heard of you, um, and I'm, I'd be very surprised if they haven't, because I know you have YouTube videos out there, and the information you have is is quite fascinating. Can you give us a background of, of, of who you are, and then we'll start talking about the information? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, look, I'm a 70-year-old man. I migrated with my family to Australia from Italy in 1952. I was educated in a Catholic school. Then I went to the University of Melbourne uh, and uh, obtained medical degrees, after which I did some medical work for a while. And then uh, I was contacted by my family, let's call them my family, that it was time to commence the work. This was now in my 40th year. And uh, I then issued uh, the message that I was to give to the world in 1985 um, and I was immediately labelled as insane so I didn't have any option but just to get on with my work spiritual work I quietly went about travelled all the world for various reasons Uh, in the meantime I did further studies I got a doctorate in metaphysical science then I was awarded uh, a doctorate in theology I gave lectures and workshops particularly in America uh, then I came back uh, to Australia and uh, have uh, watched the development of all the things I wrote about in uh, 1985 happening. And uh, more more recently, uh, I've given uh, I've, I've given more information about uh, the end time as it's going to occur. People who are familiar with my work have noted there's a consistency from what I wrote in 1985. Now 30 years in 30 years that everything has developed exactly as I said. And what I bring is forward is the Gnostic doctrine, 
which is the ancient wisdom that has been buried uh, throughout the century so people wouldn't know the truth and what's going on. Now, the, the, the truth of things is fairly harsh to unprepared minds. So I have to warn people, first of all, um, uh, I'm not trying to force anyone to believe anything, and my motto is to take it or leave it. The most important thing to realize is that this is so foreign, some of you may get a little bit upset in the mental status. Um, what I would like people to do is to quietly think about things and then realign themselves to what they want to believe and what not to believe. No one is being coerced or no one is being forced. The best thing they can do is listen to what I have to say, look at my website, perhaps read some of my books, look at the uh, YouTube uh, uh, videos that I've made. And there, there are many lectures and there are many shows that I've done in America with uh, Jeff Rents in sightings.com and then make up their own minds. But they have to examine the information first and then ultimately uh, try to connect within, because we are not just physical beings, to something inside which I call the heaven within. Now, you've heard that expression before. It's the, the God consciousness within us. Um, there are various levels of God consciousness, of course, depending on who we are. And then once they connect to that, they will get the information they need to proceed uh, the way uh, the world is going and where they will go. That, in a very general outline, is um, uh, what, what I've done. And everything I've said over the years has come to fruition. So th there is a certainty about what I say and what I give that people have started to recognize now. And they can't block this information forever because we are very close to the very end of what's going on. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a, a message of joy because we are being liberated from this hell. And we are definitely living in a hell where pain and suffering are ubiquitous. And there doesn't seem to be any way out of it. And because we've been in this hole for so long, we think that's the normal thing that should be in existence, but it's not. We are exploited in every way. That is, all beings, including animals, nature, everything, all the classes of consciousness, and there are seven classes in this universe, I'll get to that some other time perhaps, all the classes are being exploited in order to keep this evil system running. And some of the people that are in this world, some of the consciousness, benefit from this exploitation of good people. So we've been trapped. And you can know that this is so because from the earliest books we have, like the Mahabharata, which is a Sanskrit book, every book we've had and every being that's come down outside of the humanity, like Jesus, Buddha, Zoroaster, Manichaeus, King Arthur, and so, has said that a time will come when this evil hell will be destroyed and good people will go to the place that they belong. And the evil ones, of course, will go to perdition. So we are actually living in the generation which will no longer know death because this is going to occur. So that's basically where I'm at. Who I am, where I get my information at, are not really all that relevant at this stage. The relevant thing is what effect this information has on people internally. Now, most of them are going to reject it because most people in the world are not real. I know that's a big statement. They are robotic consciousnesses that cannot live outside of the physical dimension. So to understand those sort of concepts, we have to discuss what is the physical dimension? Are there other dimensions outside of it? And how did it come about? Why is it like this? And what's going to be done about it? I'll give you just one little reference, and I'll be referring to Jesus quite a bit because we all know about the story of Jesus. You will remember that when he was being uh, 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 exploited and harmed by the archons, the people in charge at that time, mm. he said to them, my kingdom is not of this world, which means this dimension, this universe, which should lend us to the idea that there are kingdoms outside of this. Now, once that clicks in, you know that this is only a temporary structure. 
and he did say that the end of the world will come. Every prophet, every being, everyone that's been connected to what is called the supermental plane has told us that. That is the message they've brought down. And they kept saying, hang on, hang on, it's going to come. And my message is from 1985, you don't have to hang on anymore, just turn to the light because this is it. And how and why I got to that point, we can discuss later. Uh, now, some of the information I'm going to be on the outer physical mind is going to be a little bit terrifying and frightening to some people, but they must understand that the fear is an illusion put there in the body by the evil structures that control us. First thing I want to mention is we're all going to physically die. There's nothing great about that. Physical death is an illusion. We have all died many, 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 many times. There is more medical evidence for the existence of incarnation than there is that the fact that the 12 apostles lived, for example. So we can easily um, regress people by hypnosis to their past lives, and they'll tell you exactly who they are and who they've been. There's a lot in the literature about reincarnation. Edgar Cayce, who was a staunch Christian, spoke about reincarnation in his trances, and he was quite amazed that it was a reality. So we have to break the restrictive paradigms in people's minds to be able to grasp this understanding. The, the bodies are temporary. They're all going to die anyway. They really live to more than 100, and they're forever breaking down. There's a reason for that, because they exploit us of energy. But what I mean is we, we get recycled, and that is a bad thing too. That was never meant to be. That's part of the evil system. So the first thing people listening to me should realize is that there is no such thing as a fear of physical death because we're going to exist anyway. It's like jumping out of your body from one, your kitchen to the lounge room. Some people don't even know they're dead once they die, particularly if they die suddenly in accidents, for example. Mm. Um, and they have to be told by people that come from other levels, say, look, you're dead now, you've got to move on, and, and so on. But this is diverting a little bit from uh, the introduction. So the first thing I want to do is, if any fear comes from what the information I reveal, just realize it's your outer mind and the fear is an illusion. You have to destroy that. To some people, this will ring immediately as the truth within them. This is the whole point. That's why my motto is take it or leave it, because in some people, it will ring exactly right. In other people, uh, they'll get a scintilla of awakening, and slowly that will grow. But it, the, the process is going to be fairly fast because we are in the end time. Others will never accept that this is the truth, and these are the beings of darkness. Now, why do I say beings of darkness? There are three types of beings in physical bodies. We're talking about the consciousness now, not the bodies. Okay. That exist in this world. Jesus talked about this 2,000 years ago, but that was buried. That information was totally buried by the nascent pseudo-Christian church that arose at the times, and all this information was discovered at Nag Hammadi in 1945. And uh, under punishment of death, the church ordered all the people who had this information to destroy it. Luckily, one of the monks at the monastery did not. He buried it for us. There are three types of beings, and we'll come to that eventually as I discuss this, uh, what, what, uh, what is going on in the world, and uh, these beings will resonate. Now, the, the, succinctly, what's going to happen is this part of the physical universe where we are, the earth, is finished. It's going to be totally and physically destroyed by mechanisms that I have uh, discussed in my shows and books. It doesn't just involve the Earth. It involves the whole solar system. And this is the part that Planet X and Nibiru, which is one of its planets, and the other planets are going to play. And not only the solar system, but this whole galaxy is going to be liquefied and destroyed. This is part of the process of destroying the whole physical dimension. It is now over 95% destroyed. And evidence is starting to filter through that our astronomers can see that the universe is collapsing, is, is totally dying. And this is on purpose, and I'll get to this uh, information as we proceed in the show or shows. Okay. So we have evidence for this now. And, and we are going elsewhere. There, there are two places people can go. 
that they have been classified already as either being viable, that means that they continue, can continue their evolution in the spiritual level, which is the divine level, where the God consciousness resides, or they are finished, which means they are not viable, they cannot continue, and they will be transmuted, which means they will go back to nothingness. And their consciousness, the energy of their consciousness, once it's cleansed, will go back to what I've called the primordial pool, where units of consciousness come out to, to evolve. I hope that's not too much for people to, to accept uh, on uh, first introduction to what I have to say, but basically that's what we're going to cover. Okay. Now, everything we've been taught is wrong, and that has been on purpose. They've kept us trapped in an illusion of ignorance so that we wouldn't wake up to the truth. Every time anyone like this talked like I'm talking now, that's Jesus, Manichaeus, Zoroaster, Buddha, and so on, was destroyed by the system. The Gnostics were destroyed by the system because they, the, 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 the archons, the ones in charge, and this includes the pseudo-Christian churches, did not want the truth to come out. And the truth is that we are controlled by evil in an evil environment. There's no other way to say it. And all the beauty of this world and so on is a, is a total fabrication and a gross illusion. It's an illusion, and it's going to be destroyed. Right, okay. Well, it, it's up to you what way you want to go down the path. We've already have questions coming in. But before we get to the questions, what, what way do you want to take it? Well, I... Obviously, a lot of questions are going to arise in people's minds, of course, about this, and I can't answer everything at one go. But I think if I start about how all this came about, they may get an inkling, because the Bible beings know this. It's in within them. All this knowledge is called the inner mouse, as the Gnostics would call it. And eventually, uh, by stimuli that I give, by, by recognition of what I say, little lights will uh, turn on within them and they, their own truth will come out. This is the whole point of spiritual awakening. And you don't have to read books, you don't have to listen to what other people have to say, because basically that's all nonsense. What you have to do is find the truth within. And each of us varies, but we awaken to uh, enough to take the next step, which is to prepare to drop the physical shell and to move on to a true spiritual uh, evolution where we belong. It, everything has been interrupted. So the first thing I'd like to do is to explain how all this came about, and then we can move on. Okay. Now, do, do, regarding, yes, now, the, regarding the viability, just to, just to touch base on the whole viability thing, because I think that's definitely important, just to kind of get our heads around that. You mentioned something like 650 million out of 7 billion that would be viable to move on. And what's your definition of being viable for people who haven't heard your shows before? Uh, actually, yes, we, we finished the, um, the uh, verdict uh, about two years ago in humans. Don't forget there are also animals, which are class 3, vegetation, which is class 2 consciousness, and the mineral consciousness, which is class 1. 650 uh, million of the 7 billion have been designated as viable, which means that they are um, spiritually healthy enough to continue evolution elsewhere once the physical dimension is destroyed. Now... Um, this is going to be very difficult for some of your listeners to accept, but in 1999, we had a, ma a massive evacuation of viables, about a billion of them, from this earth. They were theomorphic consciousness, and they were beings that had been created by the God consciousness and were trapped here, but it was time to liberate them out of this earth. The process that is occurring on this earth is occurring on all other planets because all other planets are inhabited throughout this galaxy. Uh, it's time for this galaxy to go. Other galaxies have gone before and some others will go later. The few that remain will go later. What it means by being viable is that they have enough divine qualities to be able to continue in a spiritual dimension. The others that are non-viable uh, cannot continue for two reasons. They are evil and they have no mechanism by which they can live outside of this physical dimension. 
Why are they evil? We have to go back to this because they were created by evil. So we have to come to how did this evil arise? What is evil? Why does it control the whole uh, world? And we know from the story of Jesus that evil controls the world. Um, uh, he wasn't in charge here. As Satan was evil. Satan is just another word for the evil essence, the evil principle. So we have to come to as to how this physical dimension came to be. Now, scientists tell us that the physical universe is between 13 and 16 billion years old. But according to uh, the information I have outside of the physical dimension, it's closer to 50 billion years old. So our scientists aren't accurate there. Now, time is only relevant within a dimension. Outside of the physical dimension, from the dimension I get my information, there is no time. Now, that's a concept that's very difficult to comprehend because we live uh, through time. So, now, what happened? How did this come about? Uh, the, the divine dimensions are all about progression and experimentation. One experiment was done that went wrong, and this is what's called the celestial error in Gnostic texts. This information has been hidden for a long, long time, but it's now resurfaced, mainly due to my writings. That error, initially they attempted, the divine beings who made this error in the experiment attempted to correct it. Now, one of the problems is in, in this bad experiment that the negative polarity, which is there to harmonize the positive, became active, which it should never have been. And it developed traits of selfishness and going against the very beings that had made this experiment. Now, initially they tried to correct it by pouring more and more energy into it, but that only made this monster stronger. So eventually they said, the only way we can be rid of this experiment is to totally destroy it. As soon as this evil mind that arose from this experiment heard that, it entombed itself into what is now the physical universe. It isolated itself. But it didn't realize that it had no source of energy. So the only way it could get energy was to exploit the divine particles that were trapped in this tomb. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense if people have never heard this before, mm. and we're using words to try and explain something that occurred spiritually, but that's exactly what happened. And since that time, there's been a war of essences between good and evil to try and destroy this uh, celestial error and rescue the good beings that were trapped in there. Now, the good beings are what I've called the theomorphs. These are the ones who were created by the God consciousness and simply got trapped in this error. Now, the error realized it needed its own beings to run its universe. So, at first were created robotic beings, robotic consciousness. Now, consciousness is simply a circuit, an electrical circuit. Once it um, folds back on itself, it becomes aware. Uh, advanced aliens can create... Um, for example, artificial consciousness, as we are going, humanity is almost at the verge of creating artificial consciousness. The grey aliens that people have seen all around the place, for example, the ones that crashed uh, at Roswell in 1947, they were robotic consciousness, but they are higher level than human con uh, robotic consciousness. Now, so the first group that were created were these robots. Now, some of them were created with divine energy, in their consciousness and we have to come back to this later once that energy ran out ran out this evil essence that is a control of their, this error entombed error created other robots with the consciousness it stole the energy it stole and is is completely uh, evil it's been evil by evil i mean that it it uh, as jesus said they are liars murderers and hypocrites from the beginning they live by exploiting other people with energy because they haven't got energy of their own. Would so they, the would, whole purpose of this evil creation is exploitation of others. Dr. Joseph, would they be classed as the fallen angels? No, we'll get back, we'll get back to that in a moment. Okay. Now, the third group it created, when it created a mass of these robotic beings, it needed a class to control it all, and it, con and it created what's called the demonic creation. These are beings 
that are superior because they've already reached class five, superior to humans on this level, and they control everything in the universe. Now, these are demons. They are beings of darkness, and they control everything. And eventually, when we discuss further, I will give you examples of how they control the world, the world government's experimentation, and so on. And some of them are alien, aliens that have come into this world, of course, and supervise everything that humanity does. And they're the ones that have interfered with the evolution of human bodies and so on. So these are the ones. Now, the fallen angels is a misnomer, is a term used by these uh, black angels, as it were, because they are superior to humans. But they're not fallen. The whole thing, the evil essence is the fallen, uh, is the fallen principle. These are dark angels, if you want to call them that, because they're a class five. They're a class above humans, and they control the whole universe. And there's been a battle between good and evil ever since. Now, because it's an evil dimension in every way, and I show that in my books, in every way you can think of, this is an evil dimension. We live in a virtual reality. We live in an, an illusion where they try to make sure you don't wake up to what's going on. Because of that, all the divine has been able to do is periodically, now don't forget this is over 50 billion years, not over the last six, 7,000 years that we have history. Because all the previous ones have all been destroyed and all the records are destroyed and the memory has been destroyed. Now, uh, the ones, the only ones that could come in, were what are the higher consciousness, which these, which we call the sun consciousness of God, the mother, the son, and the father. Now, the sun consciousness would come in as the avatar, and every generation would have its own avatar. It's the same being, the same higher consciousness, and it would come in to bring energy into the starving uh, true beings to sustain them until the final correction came. And there are many, I mentioned many, I've already mentioned some of these uh, avatars. And they can, they can be public beings like Jesus, Manichae, Zoroaster, King Arthur, and so on. Uh, the wealth traditions have a great amount of information for King Arthur being the once and future king, the Welsh Christ, the, 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 the Druidic Christ, the one who's going to take the true beings back to our Anwen, and so on. Exactly the same information. And in fact, it was Jesus incarnated as King Arthur after his stint in the Middle East. But between then and that, he, he reincarnated as Manichaeus, who, sta who, who uh, started off the Manis, the, the religion that still exists in parts of China, in Turfan, for example. So it's far more complicated than uh, the religions of the world have given to us. So what has happened is that this avatar has come in again and again and again to remind us that this world will eventually be destroyed to give us energy to sustain the viable ones until this change occurred. And now this change has finally occurred. It's finally here. In the meantime, because of uh, the nature of the universe being uh, evil and corrupt, it's corrupted even in its, in its structure, this part of the, uh, the solar system where we are has another uh, solar system that interacts with it. And every 26,000 years or so, <clears throat> because of the way it's set, it's set um, we have what's called um, the precession of the equinoxes and the deleterious effects on Earth. As well as that, every 3,600 years, as people may have read, this other planet X, which uh, the governments have denied until very recently, they didn't want to, to upset the people, uh, this has deleterious effects on Earth. And eventually the Earth crumbles, has earthquakes, lava flows, uh, massive change in climate, and so on, and also falls on its axis. By falling on its axis means it falls 90 degrees, and so land becomes sea and sea becomes land, and so on. And that tends to wipe out all the physical beings of the planet including animals and so on but nothing is lost because they just simply die off go to the astral and then come back and the whole thing is restarted but it's a control system and those people that restart don't have the memory of the technology they had beforehand and there's evidence that technology in other times has been far superior to what we have now including nuclear nuclear weapons and so on and spacecrafts mm and so on. Yeah. So now we've come to the final time and we've taken the opportunity 
because of Planet X in Nibiru, to destroy the whole planet, we've taken the time, uh, the, the opportunity to liberate all the beings as everyone will die off. Now, so it's a planned thing. Now, one of the things we did after 1985, as I wrote in my books, is we removed all the available energy on Earth uh, from the, uh, the evil beings who control it. So everything has fragmented. Everything runs on energy. Without spiritual energy, nothing runs, as, as well we'll talk about later. Now, what happened is, means that they are starving. The only way they can get energy from beings is to excite them in some way. And that's either by causing suffering, and that's the reason for many of these wars, perennial wars, or stimulation through the, um, the sex centers, and that's why pornography is rife on the planet. But if you'll notice, everything is collapsing. All parts yeah. of society, or nature is collapsing, the climate is collapsing, the earth is dying, every aspect is dying. And as that collapses, minds are also collapsing because you need energy to run minds. And what we have now is the terminal madness of the end time, as I've explained it. I explained all this as an essay called The Terminal Madness of the End Time. So we are actually in the death throes of the planet. Humanity is actually dying. There is no way out of this. It's been on purpose. The earth is being starved of energy on purpose by the divine creators, by the divine forces, in order to finish it off. Can I, just, uh, can I just jump in there, Dr. Joseph? What do you say to the people that are saying that, you know, globally people are beginning to wake up? And remember I sent you an email regarding Foster, Foster Gamble and the global reset. And there's people out there saying that the cabal are on the last legs and they're not going to last. And humanity has a, has a great future. I mean, what do you say to all these people? There is no future for humanity. There is no such thing as humanity. There are at least ten types of consciousness in the human bodies, which I've explained in my books. This is an end, uh, an end term uh, change that is occurring. Uh, what, what people are doing is actually awakening to the truth of things. Everyone needs to know why this change is coming, why they have failed, and the ones that have succeeded, why they have succeeded. That everyone is awakening now to the evil that's controlled their lives. Everyone is awakening to the mess that they've been. Before that, they were asleep. Now, with the final times, they have to know. Everyone has to hear the information I have because it involves them intimately. And people are not going to just physically die. We're all going to physically get out of these bodies. We're going to physically die. But the majority are going to spiritually die and they have to know why. Okay. And they do know why once they awaken. Okay, the question for you. We've heard from the likes of the, the, the Hopi Indians and the Marys and the Maya and the, and uh, I, the I Ching, all these kind of prophecies. And the, and the prophecy, my understanding of the prophecy is that it's something that's going to happen unless we change our ways and what we do. And there was something, uh, somebody said to me there during the week, I was talking to them and I said that you would be on the show. And they said that, well basically, we, our future isn't destined yet. And if we change our ways, we can make a difference, we can make a change. Because we're all, it's all about timelines. And if we don't change what we're doing, then the prophecy is as you predict. But if we change what we're doing, then the timeline will change. What do you think of that? Alan, let's go, let's go to out of mind logic for a moment. How are people on Earth here going to change the orbit of planet X and stop one of its own satellites smashing into Earth? How are they going to stop the fall of Earth on its axis? How are they going to stop the red dust that's going to suffocate all life on this planet? How are they going to stop the, the, uh, the absolute failure of crops, the death of the seas by this radiation we're receiving. Uh, uh, th that's an impossibility. People are giving themselves false hope, and the ones that continue like this are going to suffer all the more. I'm here to tell you it's the end. It's finished, full stop. There is no more Earth. There is no more solar system. There is no more galaxy. 
even our sun is dying, if you, under, you can understand that. All the planets are dying. The whole solar system is heating up. It's got a, a febrile condition that's going to destroy all the solar system. Now, these people are giving false hope. They, they have been told about physical changes to come, and these physical changes come, as I said, every 26,000 years or 25,800 years, and also every 3,000, uh, what is it, uh, 657 years. But these are just physical changes. I'm here to tell you that the whole thing is finished. There is no hope for the physical aspect. This is evil. This is going through. And one of the uh, basic things you can uh, identify is the terminal madness. Now, very shortly, within weeks, I believe, the World War III is going to start. Now, this will destroy between a third and a half of uh, humanity within a very short time. The others can't last more than two years because of the nuclear winter and the starvation that is to occur. There is no way that is going to be stopped because it's been programmed into the end time. So these people are doing you a disservice. Okay. Also, some okay. say good, bad aliens, aliens are going to come and uh, uh, fix the earth. That is nonsense. They've been saying that for a long, long time. Let me tell you a little story. When I first got this information, one of the things I had to do is go and connect to various people around the world to make sure that they received the message also. And one of the places I went to was uh, to Mexico, which is well known for its uh, connection to UFO and space people and so on. And there we used to interview the villagers and the peasants, and they would say, yes, we've been visited by two types of aliens. One would say, just carry on, we're going to fix everything, everything will be all right. Now, this is going back nearly 30 years. And, of course, it hasn't been all right. They haven't fixed anything. Everything has got worse. And the other aliens were telling them, look, prepare for the divine dimensions. The earth is going to be destroyed. The ones that are, 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 are found to be suitable will go to somewhere better. The other ones will be finished. Now, that is exactly what it is. And I wrote that in the, one of my books uh, that I call My Experiences. So if you look back since the last 30 years that I've written this information, that I've brought down this message, there's been absolutely no improvement. Everything in a state of decay and collapse. There is not one positive sign you or anyone else can give me to tell me that there's going to be a brighter future, that we're going to turn all this around. Now, why do I know all this? I know all this because I've seen the future. I know that there is nothing, and we are prepared. We've already taken a billion theomorphs out of here, and we're just waiting to take the other 650 million. They have had to have modifications to their spiritual bodies, aspects, so that they can continue living in the divine dimensions because they were created within this era. And nothing that's created within this era, unless it has modification, can live outside of it. No, so can, what they're telling you is nonsense. Okay, can I just touch base on this? Okay. All the animal kingdom is dying. That's that, right. That every, every aspect of the animal kingdom and the vegetable kingdom is dying. So uh, that is a fallacious argument that if we think better, everything will be all right. It's out of the hands of humanity. Okay. People have got to understand that. Re it's in the hands of the, the divine dimensions. Okay, regarding the people who are viable, one of the interviews I heard you talk about, you said something about these people will be uh, ascended or picked up before the, 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 the worst happens. What do you mean by that? Some, maybe, not all. This has already happened. In the 30 years that I've uh, uh, given the message, some have actually been picked up. Now, there are divine spacecraft that can come into the dimension, solidify, and actually pick people up. Now, they can be picked up, and the body simply drops dead, or the body is picked up, sucked up into the craft, and the body is, is disposed of in the cargo hold, if you like, and so on. Now, to a number that will occur around the world, um, most will die off. Now, dying off is not the horrible, terrible you know, frightening thing that people uh, have in their minds. That has been programmed into us to, 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 to frighten us and lose energy. What it simply means is we step out of this suit, this cardboard box, and we are the real beings that we are. Uh, this will happen near the end time. 
Uh, one of the uh, the things uh, uh, I have to do is, uh, unfortunately, is stay till the end. I will be here till the last day to make sure that the whole thing has gone and also to make sure that all the Bibles have been evacuated. So there, I, there's my promise that I'll be here till the end. Okay. The, so it, it can't be that far down the track. I'm already 70. Most people don't get uh, to 80, 85. I might, I might not which means the outer limit, maybe, maybe 15 years. Now, when I gave the message in 85, we had a meeting outside of this dimension, which I attended. You're starting to un understand, I guess, by, by me making that statement that my consciousness is not human. I'm not from this level at all. Um, we had a meeting and said that the earth is going to be destroyed. I have to come down and tell people why and when. Now, they said... These processes will be begun, and I wrote about them, and they said to me clearly, I had to make this clearly, that the outer limit to which the year that the earth would exist was 2035, and that was exactly 50 years from the time of the meeting. But we know from the way things have been going that it won't get to 2035. There is no way. And I have a number of... Uh, ideas of when it's going to happen according to how things evolve. Now, because the whole thing is going erratic, we can't be absolute about it. The solar system of uh, Planet X has become erratic because of the nature. It's breaking down very badly, so we don't know the, the exact orbits of its planets and their moons. So at any time, they could go astray and knock into our moon, which will knock into our Earth, or they directly hit our Earth and so on. But by the time that happens, other mechanisms will have occurred so that no living creature will be on Earth. The message was that I gave in 85, the, the planet is being cleared of all physical life in preparation from, for its total physical destruction. Well, so everyone is going to die off before the planet is uh, pulverized. Okay, with, with the, the whole idea of the dissension or the viable people being picked up, would, would people not say to you that that's more of a kind of new age mumbo jumbo thing? What, the ascension? Yeah. No, no, you, you, look, you have to evacuate people in some way. It can't be physical because the physical can't exist in spiritual dimensions. And that gives a lie, of course, to the the assumption of the Blessed Virgin that the Catholic Church wants you to believe in. That's a whole lot of nonsense. You can't have a, a polluted physical body in a spiritual dimension. No, um, the, you have to take out the Bible in some way. I've already told you we took out a billion in 1999, and most people didn't know. What happened there is the consciousness is sort of sucked out of the bodies, and three things could have happened to those bodies. They could have died. They could have been uh, left as... Uh, on uh, autopilot, as I call it, simply the, the, uh, the animalistic uh, consciousness continues in the body. The people will be quite vague and not sure what's going on. Or thirdly, those bodies can be re-inhabited by, by evil discarnates that are in the area or demons. Now, this is a very important one. The demonic consciousness has been taking over physical bodies more and more. So demonic possession is a very real thing. So that already occurred in 1999. There, there's no such thing. The new age says that the, the earth is going to go into another dimension or split into two with the goodies going high and the baddies staying here. That's utter nonsense. Within a few years, there will be no earth, okay? I'm telling you that's exact. Now, whether, whether people want to believe it or not is up to them. My motto is take it or leave it. But we know from the changes that have occurred over the last 30 years since I gave the message and since I said exactly what the mechanisms are going to be, we know that my information has been 100% correct. And it's not going to change now, I'm telling you. No, that's okay. That's fine. That's no problem. Um, now, one of the things that we hear on a regular basis is people talking about um, just the, the way the, the, the positive side of things. And uh, I just, I just made a list of a couple of questions which I said that I had today. And... Um, uh, you know, a lot of people that we've had on the show have said, 
you know, this is going to take place, that's going to take place. And war, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, but it's never here. And this has been going on for years and years and years. So do you have, I mean, you've just put your, you've just said yourself there that in a few weeks' time we're going to have World War Three. What if we don't? What if it gets sorted? Okay, okay. I can understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. This idea of the end of the world has been prophesied for a long, long, long time. What we read in ancient texts may not necessarily be what the people at that time said. For example, Jesus is supposed to have said that it will occur in his generation. But we don't know whether that's true, whether he really said that, or whether he really used the word generation. Mm -hmm. He might have said, this will occur in this epoch, which might mean the next uh, 3,600 years with the visitation of planet X or something like that. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what we have to say is exclude those things um, from ancient texts because we, we don't know whether they're accurate or not. And this is where I said people have to go within to see whether it's accurate or not. Now, let's say it doesn't happen. Things go in cycles in this uh, physical dimension, and people who have a, a little bit of awareness of uh, how energy works know that there are cycles. There are yearly cycles, seven-year cycles, 14-year cycles, and so on. If it doesn't happen, we've been waiting for a nuclear war since the Second World War. It eventually will happen. If it doesn't happen in December, it may happen later on. It may never happen, but those other things that are going to come will happen. I'm here to make sure that the end does come. I know that sounds a bit egotistical, but it's not. Okay, um, and you can't give us a timeline on this, no? Can you give us a timeline or something a bit more than like a kind of 15 yes, year window? Yes, I've already, I've already told you the outer limit is 2035. Yeah. Earth cannot exist beyond that point. We, had, we decided at the meeting of when, to set, when we set these mechanisms in motion that it will not exist beyond 2035. Secondly, I have to be here for the last day. Okay. I'm already 70, and I don't think I will live another 10 years. But So, therefore, it has to be before 2035 and possibly before 2024, the way I see it. Yeah. Now, it may be, it may be earlier, it will be two years. It may be any time. Now, what we don't know how quickly these rogue planets are going to cross our path, as it were. Um, we don't know what the gravitational pull on the Earth is. It may be that uh, not only the, uh, the oxide dust will come, but also the gravitational pull can be that high that we'll lose our atmosphere and we're all dead. Um, but if I give you a timeline, yes, is between now and 2035, which my considered opinion says it will actually be, be, be tw before 2024. There are, there are windows of opportunity between the end of uh, 20, uh, 2016, 2019, and 2024. Yeah, so you've it... got to remember that outside of this dimension, there is no time. So we're trying to figure out a timeline from a, uh, from a dimension where there is no time. So it makes it a little bit difficult. But I'm sure you saw the reports there where it said that because of Fukushima, all seas will be sterilized of marine life by the middle of 2020s. Yeah. yeah. What are we going to eat? What's the world going to eat then? Our water will be poisoned. Um, with this heating up of the solar system, how many of us will uh, be able to live if it gets to 50 degrees? Global warming has got absolutely nothing to do with carbon dioxide. In fact, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a result of global warming, not a cause. And we, the reason is that the, the planet itself is warming up and the seas are warming up and they're releasing carbon dioxide. So these are terminal mechanisms that signify the end of the planet. Mm. But it's not just that. It's the end of the whole solar system and the end of the whole galaxy. This is, people have to get think beyond just our simple Earth. Okay. It's not just okay. that. Well, no, we're, we're, we're on it. When I was talking about the time, I was kind of hinting at the fact that I remember an interview that you did, and you did mention 2016 as a potential, you know? 
Yes, very strongly. I feel very strongly that November 2016 may be the end time, which is lovely. The quicker we're out of here, the better. Yeah. People don't realise how much better it is outside of this hell. Yeah, well, I, t- I totally agree with you. There is a number of people that I'm in communication with, and we all kind of say, well, bring it on because we're fed up with what's going on here. But listen, I'll tell you what we do, doc- Dr. Joseph. We have a host of questions that's come in, and we do have limited time. We have about probably another um, 45, 50 minutes probably, and uh, we'd love to get through all the questions. So we'll try and fire them, we'll fire them over to you, and then if you can kind of do a kind of few minutes per question, then we should be able to get through them all. Over to you, Steve. I'll do my best. I'll find some oxygen and I'll do my best. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> you need to open a window. Just just while you're finding some oxygen, when you were saying there, Dr. Joseph, about, about uh, living in 50 degrees uh, centigrade, I noticed there during the week that in some parts of Australia, the temperature had gone up to 41 degrees. I, I'd say you're feeling oh, yeah. that over there. Where I live, we've, we've had the last five days at 40 degrees, yes. And it's very arid with no water. So, and bushfires all around. Yes, this is going to be a common problem, unfortunately. Uh, the earth is definitely heating up. It'll affect the young, very young and the very old at first. And then people run out of money for air conditioners and what have you. You know, it's going to be a hell on earth. So the quicker the divine I mean, beings bring it on, the better it is for those who deserve to be rescued. Yeah. I agree. I, I just hope I'm in there. I really do. Uh, and my family as well. If, oh, no. if your name's not on the list, you're not getting in. I hope my name is on the list. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we, we crack on with the questions, uh, Dr. Joseph. We had a question in early on. We actually have quite a few questions from Chris. Chris, by his own admission, has his, uh, his, 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 oh, he has his, one of his hats on this evening. I can't, I can't remember which has a sensible hat or something. Uh, but Chris was wondering, uh, what, can you ask Dr. Joseph when you get a chance ha, uh, with this great inf- information that you're sharing you are very passionate about it but can you be sure that you have not woken up to a false version of the game and could be, be could be getting used as a false prophet uh, the answer is no for two reasons if he reads everything I've published since 1985 he knows that it's uh, 100% accurate except for the things that are variable, for example, the nuclear war and so on. Yeah. It was supposed to start in 2007, and it didn't. So then we go in seven-year cycles. It should start at the end of this year, next month. Okay, but there are, they are variables. But the general trend is towards an end time. The other thing is, how do I know I'm not being tricked? It's, well, I can't really answer that um, in explicit terms, but I can tell you this. I'm here to make sure it happens. So, yeah. And the fact is, um, I will be here till the last day. I can't say any more than that at this stage, but I am here to make sure this happens because I am here to awaken the people, uh, to have classified them, and to take the Bibles away. I'm not going to say any more than that. People can jump to their own conclusions. No. And, and, that, and that's not being egotistical. That has been my role. That's the reason why I came into the physical on this occasion. No, that's fine. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you have you obviously have a role, uh, and that's your role. I know you can you can give the, the people information. It's up to them what they do with that information. The, the same as any information that that comes across from OAM, we can't force people to believe it. We can only plant the seed and hope that exactly. it. We exactly. Hope that that seed what grows. I want people to do is. If they're interested, just to listen to what I have to say, read my website, read some of the books, and then don't accept any of it, refer it to their own spirit within. Yeah. After a sh- if they can purify physically and spiritually enough, bells will ring for them, and they will know whether this stuff is accurate for them or not for them. That's all we can do. Uh, That's why my motto is take it or leave it. I suppose that they... they Go ahead. I, I, sorry, I was just going to say, I suppose you just have to look, look at the world around them and see what's going on. I mean, it's quite self-obvious, really, isn't it? Yes, I think if they start reading uh, my website and where we've vindicated all the things that are, are going and why they're, they're occurring and so on. There's another thing also. Um, existence is all about energy. And they will be affected by my words in one of two ways. Um, of course, if they're not awakened, they're, most people are going to be fearful of what I'm saying. But if they're even a little bit awakening, 
awakened, one of two things will occur. They will get fearful and angry about what I'm saying. How dare I say this sort of thing? The other thing is, oh, thank God, it's finally here. And they will feel a, a joy and happiness that the end of their misery has come. Now, they're the only two real reactions they can have. As I say, early on, they might get a little bit frightened and the out of mind. They might have to rethink. They might say, oh, good, goodness, how could it be that everything we've been told all this time has been wrong? Well, that's for them to answer. What they have to do is refer everything inside into the little God particle inside them. If this is for them, it'll, it'll bring peace and joy. If they haven't got any God particle, all they'll get is a lot of fear and anger. Fear well, because they know that they're, they're doomed and anger because they can't do anything about it. Well, I can definitely say, does it, as I say earlier on, there's a number of people that I know that would say, bring it on, it's about, it's about time. True. You know, true. And, you know, been waiting a long, long time for true justice to emerge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and here it is. Okay, Steve, next one. Yeah, Dr. Joseph, uh, another question from Chris. Chris is wondering, do you believe that the remaining six and a half billion are soulless? So, so, no souls, obviously. Yes, they've got artificial souls, including the demons. They can't exist outside of this dimension. That's why the six and a half billion, sorry, six and a, 650 million had to have modifications made. Otherwise, they would have been evacuated with the billion theomorphs in 1999. We had to work on their structures so that they can exist. It's like giving them uh, gills to exist underwater or lungs so that they can breathe, breathe the divine air. Of course, there's no air in the divine dimensions, but you, you get the idea that, that they will be able to exist outside of this dimension. Nothing of evil can exist outside of this dimension. And uh, modifications have been made so that this can never be repeated. Um, and uh, there's an eternal watch that if any experiment tends to go towards activating the negative, it will be immediately uh, self-destructive. So that, that's one good thing we've been promised. This, this will never happen again. Yeah, uh, just uh, something just popped into my head when you were saying that about not not being able to to survive in in this or outside of this reality. A uh, guest last week spoke of the body leaving the 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 earth, and he said that if the body leaves, like uh, so someone traveling to the moon for uh, for for argument's sake, that once the body reaches a height of about two hundred fifty thousand miles above the planet, that it just kind of it's the the body will stop, the heart stops beating, and the body will just turn into dust. I just wanted to throw that at you and see what what your thoughts are on that one. Oh, it's funny that you mentioned two hundred fifty thousand miles because that's exactly the distance of the moon uh, from the Earth. Yes, there's a the, there's um, a border, a boundary of the astral plane at exactly that level. And if they go beyond that, what happens is the, the etheric and astral bodies, which are held by the physical body, break off. And then the body dies, because you can't live without the etheric and the astral body feeding it. Uh, now, I know, it's never been published anywhere, but I know that some of the astronauts that went to the moon uh, were very close to that, and they were getting out-of-body experiences. In other words their astral and etheric levels wanted to leave their physical bodies. And, and this does happen, and that's one of the problems about space travel, of course. How do you stop that from happening? You, genuine spacecrafts have an etheric coating uh, and uh, that uh, prevents that. Uh, but that's, that's more on the physics side of things. But you are right, yes, the body can't exist outside of this um, warp dimension. Now, all the planets have this etheric covering, so that um, normal beings, class 4 beings, can't go from planet to planet. But they do travel. People from other planets and galaxies have been brought here, and from here they've gone elsewhere. And this is part of an exchange that evil has done in order to make them suffer even more. I'll give you another example, too, that you may have heard of. Star children are, are occurring now. Since 1999, no true being, no being that's viable has been allowed to reincarnate into bodies in preparation for the total destruction of this planet. But we have had a number of very highly evolved beings 
and you can see them because of their technical abilities. These star children are phenomenal with computers, with technology and everything. These are beings that have escaped from other galaxies when they were collected and have precipitated on this level because slowly all the dimensions, uh, the other areas are collapsing and they, they're crowding into this uh, particular galaxy. Now, this one is being destroyed, so some of them will try and escape through wormholes and stargates into other galaxies, but less and less of them are able to do so because we're, we're gathering them more and more and blocking these things, and eventually, of course, there'll be nowhere else to run. So that's another example of uh, these highly evolved beings that have come from other areas. They come from more advanced civilizations that exist in, in the universe. So what do, you say, what do you say to people? We've had guests on the show who said they've been in, involved in secret space programs to Mars and they've been on Mars. Um, what, you know, the likes of Laura Eisenhower, I think she was involved, Captain Kramer, Andrew Visago, and a few other people have been involved in saying they've been there physically. Do you reckon they have to detect to do that? Yes. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Um, as I said, once they have an etheric covering, it's fine. Now, this was part of Alternative 3 that the U.S. government and a few of the elites around the world <coughs> developed because once they found that Planet X was really there and really coming and there's a possibility the Earth will fall on its axis and most people will be destroyed, they had to find a way of trying to survive. Now, one of the ones was to build massive underground cities, which they've done, and they, they won't exist in those, I'm sorry to say, because the whole Earth will be destroyed. So the second one was to destroy as many humans as they can, and there are processes undergoing now, but they haven't been successful. And the third one was to, 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 to leave the sinking ship like rats and find an alternative. Now, they tried the moon, and they were told to get out and never come back by the aliens that were there. So they went to Mars, and the Martians said, as long as you don't interfere with where we are. But lately, as you see, there have been massive explosions on Mars, and it was hit by that comet, uh, or uh, uh, things uh, affected it, and that is a dead end for them. They can't escape anywhere because the whole physical dimension is doomed. They think that they will survive physically, but they can't. Nothing will. And, of course, their consciousness, the consciousness of these elites, of these demons, of these archons, are going to be destroyed. And that is why they're going mad. Okay. Eventually, when the penny drops, they will be so insane that they themselves will destroy the world if they're, if they're given the opportunity. And this is what's going to happen with this nuclear war. They've been pushing Putin more and more and more and more. Okay. And he, he holds the winning hand at this stupid game they're playing. Once he's given the order... And I just said a couple of days ago on my website, he has been given the green light. He's to do what he is to do. So it will come. And who will give him the green light? It's not me here on this level, no. I don't know the man. I don't contact him. The, 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 the divine party that's arranging all this will somehow uh, do it on a spiritual level. Everything works on a spiritual level, not on a physical level. It's funny, you know, when I first started lecturing about this, this is really insane. Um, I got some bad publicity, and one of them was that I was a Russian spy come here to overthrow the uh, Australian government. Can you believe that? I was a doctor lecturing on metaphysics, and they designated me as, as a Russian spy. I had come to overthrow... That's how ridiculous people are. Unbelievable. Okay, we'll, we'll pop over and we'll get more questions off, Steve. More questions coming in there? Yes, loads of questions. More questions than, than I can shake a stick at. Um, with, uh, another question, uh, Dr. Joseph, from Chris. And Chris is just saying, um, Joseph has spoken about being woken up. Do we need to be educated before we are born to enable us to wake up in this realm of reality? No. When you come into the body, you're reincarnated, right? They wipe the slate clean. They make you forget. This is in the astral world, remember? Uh, they wipe the slate clean. And the body itself has got what's called the filtering mechanism. Now, this filtering mechanism doesn't work too well when they're with infants and little children. And that's why many of them can remember being in other states of consciousness, in being in other planets, 
in and having reincarnated in here and and can recall their previous lives the literature literature is full of uh, these sort of examples where little children say oh i was married to that woman in my last life or i lived in that house or i come from that country previously and so on eventually with the spurious education we give them apart from the fact that parents tell them to shut up you can't see people that aren't there anyway which they can because they've got their psychic ability uh, eventually the education we give them blocks them off and not only that if they continue the stupid uh, allopathic doctors call them insane they say that they're mentally ill which they're not they're manifesting a higher level of awareness in fact um, so no these uh, beings uh, 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 no but what happens is when as we're older and older the education we get, which is really programming and indoctrination, blocks us off to the reality we know. And then we have to struggle to wake up and reconnect to where our higher levels. And that's what the process of awakening, going on a spiritual path is all about. We, we change our foods. Now, the, the most destructive foods we can uh, eat to block us off are animal products because they are the most polluted apart from humans. So the more meat you eat, for example, the, the more unlikely it is that you'll wake up. So you have to get off that. Alcohol reduces the etheric protection that we have, and it lets all thoughts of negative thoughts and discarnates come into our aura. So that's a no-no. Uh, hallucinogenic drugs will interfere with the centers of consciousness. So all we do is uh, contact the demonic levels rather than the, the purer levels and so on. I've explained all, all this in my books. Now, once we get to a level of purification and we start to meditate or contemplate and so on, we can eventually contact, if we're only class four, that is simple human, we can contact help guides and helpers on the other levels who have our best interest at heart. And they will start to give us information and which will pr allow us to progress more and more onto the spiritual path and we start to understand what is real and what is unreal and we the the main thing is to get to a, a get to a, a place where we connect to what i've termed the supermental consciousness now beings like myself who have come in <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, can fall asleep until we're, we're needed um a different a slightly different because when they say right it's time to wake up you wake up and you get on with your connection. Now, I want to mention this because it's important. I, I know we've covered too much ground as it is, but I want to mention this. People live in three states of reality on this earth, apart from the brain-dead morons. Most people live in what I've called the prosaic reality. They believe their government is good, that their religion tells them the truth, what they read in the newspaper is accurate, history is accurate, science has all the answers, and so on. They are complete idiots, I'm sorry to say, no offence meant, but they are asleep in the virtual reality. There is a second class of being who, I've said, live in the esoteric reality. They have woken up. A lot of them are aware of spirits, of other levels, of psychic abilities, of clairvoyance, and so on. A lot of the New Ages fall into this, and they have an awareness beyond the physical, which is good. But what a lot of them don't realize is that those other dimensions can be a trap in themselves. They are still part of the physical, uh, virtual reality. So that if you go to a, to a clairvoyant for a reading, for example, it depends on where he or she gets the information, whether it's going to be relative. They're good for mundane things like you're going to get a new car next year or you're, you're going to get the sack or you're going to be in an accident if you don't uh, be careful and so on. They're just mundane things. But there's the third group now, and this one was um, prognosticated by uh, Frederick Nietzsche over 100 years ago <coughs> and <coughs> by an Indian philosopher called Sri Aurobindo and said eventually in humanity there's going to occur a connection to the supramental consciousness. That is where we extend our mind higher and higher beyond the physical to connect the higher dimensions. 
And this is exactly what is happening to people now as they wake up. We are starting to realize that the physical dimension is finished. It's been a falsehood. It's a virtual reality. We're living in an illusion. And that our true existence is beyond all this to, in the supramental consciousness. And this is what I'm asking people to do more and more. If they read my website, this is saying, you aim to do that, to connect to the higher levels where the truly divine energy will assist you in understanding. And once you connect to that, you will realize that this is a whole illusion. This death we have to undergo is uh, nonsense and that uh, people that have truly made it uh, will have no fear about this all. They're, they're joyous about the end of this evil and they, they're ready to go on. <clears throat> the others, of course, will never be able to connect because they have no extension to go to those superior levels. And, but the thing is, everyone has to know what is going on. Regardless of what level of consciousness they're in, the prosaic, the esoteric, or the supermental, everyone on this planet has to understand this message or be delivered this message and know that this is the end. They have a right to know, and they have a right to know why the end has come. Um, if they don't understand that, that, they'll go even more insane than they are now. Well, there'll be some people, that, Dr. Joseph, who will actually say, if the war's going to end, I don't want to know about it. Isn't that fair enough to say? There are some people going to be like that. <clears throat> sure, they're morons. They're frightened of their own image in the mirror. Forget about them. Yeah. Obviously, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay. Well, that's... Is, once you awaken, the first thing you destroy is fear. Yeah. Fear is an illusion. It's been planted by the negative side. What fear could there be to think we're going to drop this horrible shell that keeps breaking down anyway, a smelly and horrible, and going towards the God levels? I mean, how can there be fear in that? Mm. And how can there be fear in the thought of physical death when you've already died thousands of times? Yeah. I mean, some of us uh, have, been, have recycled so much in the last 50 billion years that we can't even count them. You yeah. see how stupid the whole system is? But they don't, no. know, they don't know that because they've no recollection of previous lives. But you, there can be recollection. Once you start meditating or even go to a, a, a past life regressionist, you can easily do that. Mm. You will get glimpses of your past life in meditation. We all have. Okay. It's just that they miss it. Yeah. Deja okay. vu is sometimes an episode of a past life of a similar situation. Mm. Um, what they have to do is go beyond the, the lower physical monkey mind that's been programmed to reject reality. I mean, it's as simple as that. They've got to get beyond uh, the science, the history, and the religions of the, the age, which are indoctrinations to keep us stupefied. The brainwashing. Okay, let's go back over, because again, we have more questions coming in. I'm afraid we're going to run out of time, so let's try and get back over to the questions if we can. Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Joseph, another question here, and uh, 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 part one came in from Shane, and I'm going I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to expand on it a little bit, if I may. He's wondering, can you ask your guests why we need to know any of this information if, if it is going to happen anyway, so be it. And I'm just going to add on to that, and I'm going to say, wh what is the benefit of people listening to this, to this information tonight, and also to go and read all the information on your website, if we are going to die anyway and be recycled again time after time? You're not going to recycle again. After. This is it. This is the end. After this, there's no more. You have to know why you've been condemned because you've had an infinite number of chances, infinite number of reminders to toe the line or else. Now, everyone has been given the opportunity to turn to the light, light after light after life. This is what Jesus did. This is what Manichaeus did. This is what all the avatars did. We have all been given the opportunity to go straight, to honor uh, people around us, not to do evil, and so on and so forth. But the ones that would not listen have to know now why they're being dismantled. It's only, it's uh, the just thing to do. And the other ones who have been waiting for liberation, how many of us pray, deliver us from evil? That's one of the Lord's prayers, isn't it? Part of the Lord's prayer. We, ha we have to know, they have to know that the end has come and in fact their prayers are answered. Now, if there are some that don't want to know anything about this, they can go back to their football and their beers and their blonde girlfriends. Okay? We're not worried about those. They, they are just wraiths ready to disappear in the, in the scenery of uh, a past physical life. 
Okay. We're not worried okay. about that. We are trying to connect to our own to be ready. Okay, no problem. Steve. T- TZ on the chat says, Dr. Joseph, a reconnection to cosmic consciousness, co- cosmic consciousness, like I have been saying, he said, but it's not the end, it's just the beginning. What do you think of that? Well, it's the beginning of a new life in the divine dimension, yes, but it's the end of the physical dimension. 3D. It was doomed from the very start. If, if you can see with my eyes, you would see that over 95% of the physical dimension no longer exists. There is now chemical evidence to show that there are massive holes in the universe. It's as if it's collapsing on itself. Just recently a report came. You have to start reading, people, if you want to know uh, this information. But you don't really have to know what's published. What you have to know is what is inside you. You either know. It's the, the new beginning for those who are viable and the end of this horrible era. Yes, but this era, the, the life cannot continue uh, the way this physical life has been going because it's eventually self-destructive. If it runs out of energy, according to the law of thermodynamics, number two, any system that runs out of energy will eventually collapse on itself. And this is exactly what is happening to, to Earth, to the solar system, to the galaxy, and to the whole universe. It was doomed from the very first day it sealed itself in this death trap. So if people can understand that, they can understand what else is going on. Now, as I say, they can take it or leave it. They can interpret whatever they think. All they have to do is go inside themselves and they can accept whatever they want. <clears throat> no one is being forced. There's no coercion about this. But what I'm giving people the opportunity is to go inside and see if this truth, this information is for them. If it's not for them, they can go back playing golf or watching the races, or whatever they do, to amuse themselves. But you'll find that if you examine physical life the way it is, <coughs> it is pointless. I mean, a man is born, <coughs> gets educated a little bit, gets a job, earns a living, gets a family, and just as he learns to know a few things, he dies. I mean, it's as stupid as that. that there's no point to it. And m- most philosophers that have come uh, throughout the ages have, have realized that. Unless there is a spiritual component and an eventual evolution into something a lot better, and a lot less evil, the, the whole existence is pointless. That's what the, the atheists and the scientists try to tell us. But that is not so. I've explained the whole thing of what happened, what's going to happen, and how it'll finish. <clears throat> I hope we have this discussion in 10 years' time on the spacecraft that we're leaving out of there and saying, oh, you were right all along. <laughs> no, just no. watch what happens now, and you can see all the factors that have doomed the planet are activated. Yeah. There is no future, full stop. There is nothing that any human being or extraterrestrial can do to stop this process. Okay. How Next. are they going to stop a dying sun, for example? Think of that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've no answer for you on that one. But we'll try and get through the questions anyway. Yeah, we've a couple of more questions. Uh, we have a couple of questions here from Eric. Eric was wondering, uh, does, do you think that each multiverse has its own God and should we be praying to these gods? Has each what? Sorry, I missed that word. Each multiverse. Uh, each multiverse? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, no, the physical universe is unique. It does have sub-dimensions and you'll see on YouTube, for example, spacecraft coming in into this dimension through wormholes. It has sub-dimensions. Evil has tried to contaminate other dimensions, but it's been prevented. No, this, this one is unique, uh, and it hasn't got a god in charge. It's got a demigod, a demiurge, an evil essence in charge, that, and he was doomed from the start. If you read the ancient Gnostic text, that's exactly what they said. Right, you want it this way, you are doomed. That's finished. And he tried to deny the existence of other God consciousness. In the, in the true divine aspect, there are many levels of consciousness and uh, each of them experiment in their own way. And as they experiment, they create, the higher beings create dimensions where experiments occur. And of course, the God consciousness in those dimensions is the higher being that uh, <clears throat> activates that dimension. In other words, gives it space, time and gravity. Um, 
And then when that all that work is done, it's reabsorbed back in the consciousness. Now, if you read my books, you'll find that apart from the seven levels of consciousness in this universe, which are rather artificial, the mineral, the vegetable, the animal, the human, the Vedic or angelic, the galactic and the universal, there are other levels. There are seven, six other levels of which we go. And the ultimate is the, <clears throat> the pool of knowledge that has everything that is the God consciousness, and that can manifest uh, at different rays, the different aspects of, at any other level of consciousness. So that, that God consciousness, the higher one, which we call the God consciousness, can manifest as a being on any other level. So you can have a ray of God consciousness in your dog, for example, or in a human, or in, in a galaxy, uh, or in a tree, and so on. This, this is different to what we've been taught at school by our religions. Okay. Now, there's no such thing as God. There's no anthropomorphized individual that's God, like the evil essence tries to make. God is a level of consciousness which manifests in any way it wants, at any level it wants. Okay, question for you. Now, there's a lot of uh, people on the internet and they talk about um, the Ashtar Command and the Galactic Federation of Light and the Galactic, what have you, all this kind of... What's your take on these groups or are they, you know, what's your opinion on them? Yes, that's, that's a misinterpretation. Ashtar was the command of the Divine Fleet that came, came, comes in and out of this one. Uh, there are galactic federations created by these uh, extraterrestrials, and that, but they all are all part of the physical uh, illusion. They're not going to survive. In fact, there's no, no galactic federation anymore because <coughs> most of the galaxies have been destroyed. There's nothing to join <coughs> because Earth is finished. Uh, there's absolutely no way uh, that uh, this can continue any longer. Now, a lot of the psychics can't get to this level because they're stuck, as I say, on the astral level. Mm. So I will listen to them. If you're serious about this, you have to get your own answers inside and you have to sit quietly <clears throat> and you have to try and awaken that being inside you, that, that little bit of light, and say to it, to it, is this true or is this not? So, now, you can't get the right answers unless you're reasonably purified. And to be reasonably purified, you have to take steps like I mentioned earlier. And then, now the first thing you'll do is your mates will, if you start talking, they'll ridicule you and think you're insane, totally insane. Like that, that I was told 30 years ago by people when I gave them this message. They're not laughing now, I'm telling you. So what you have to do is get your own answers for yourself. You have to connect to the God consciousness by your line. And, and I'll quote Jesus again, because I like quoting Jesus, because everyone knows. He said, the kingdom of God is within. Is that not so? What he meant was that it's inside us, and we have to connect to that to get all the answers. You oh. don't listen to anyone else outside. You don't listen to books. You don't listen to religions. You don't listen to history. What you do is you may listen to them, but then... What you accept has got to come from inside. So what, what resonates with you, basically? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But you've got to be careful, because if you're not cleansed enough, you're going to get <clears throat> nonsense. Yeah. Well, you don't want, and here's a warning to people. If they get uh, a directive of information that would disadvantage them or anyone else, throw it away. It's rubbish. Yeah, totally agree. That's, that's what I've said before. That any information that comes through that is a negative or gets you to do something negative, then it's not exactly, it's not the right information. No, that's from the demonic level. Yeah, exactly. Steve, more questions there for Dr. Joseph. Yeah, we do. Another one, you, sp you spoke earlier, you mentioned the Gnostics, and Chris was wondering, the Gnostics speak about the Archons. Are they the Greys, and why are they allegedly abducting people? The archons is, is a Greek term meaning those in charge. It was about the magistrates of the courts in those days. And I started using that term in my books. No, they're not the greys. The greys, as I said, are little robots uh, of a higher civilization than us. They're just robotic beings. They haven't got an emotional body. Uh, they haven't got uh, a spirit, as it were, soul. Um, sorry, I, I forgot the second part of your question. Yeah, he was just saying, and why are they uh, allegedly abducting people? Oh, right. Well, um, because of changing conditions, 
And because extraterrestrials are used to interfering with the genetic process that's given us humanity, they are sort of like our masters in this evil environment. They have been trying to modify the physical body to fit into changing condition on the planet and to make more, even more robotic types of consciousness on the physical. So when they've been abducting people, they've done a number of things. They've stolen sperm and ova to create little beings in the craft, and often the mother is taken back to show the child she's had. This, this is well recorded in uh, literature. Or they've taken the sperm and ova to fertilize or to, um, to recreate other genetic models. Chibacabras, for example, that occurred in Central and South America mm. were one. These are experimental model, models they have. Now, uh, their process is to just regenerate a different type of DNA, and they've done this for millennia. As you know, 97% of our genes are nonsense genes. These are ones that are precursors of what we are now. Um, what and what they've done is, apart from that, is they've tried to dumb down humanity because they know eventually when humanity wakes up, as they have to, they will uh, react against the archons. And one of the ways they've been trying to dumb us down is by fluoride in water, by the chemtrails that have aluminium particularly and will cause degenerative brain uh, uh, problems, um, by vaccines that have uh, other agents in them that affect the brain and so on, and, and by actively dumbing down children at school. They're becoming more and more stupid. And as you know, fluoride has dropped, made the, a whole generation drop about 20 points according to the um, uh, one investigation by the Harvard University. I can't remember the exact details of it. So they've been trying to dumb us down to become robotic so that they can control us more and more. Because as you see around the world, the terminal madness is making people more and more belligerent, mm. more yeah. bellicose. Yeah. In other words, they're, they're reacting. And once they realize they've been trapped, that they are not real, that they have been harnessed just to, like cows, like the goimers uh, uh, in the ancient scriptures, uh, people are going to rebel more and more. Once they realize that it's the end for them, of course, they're, they're, there's going to be all havoc uh, break loose. Well, that's, that's what's happening now, Dr. Joseph. We are having massive protests over here over things going on that the government are doing. And what we, you know, I mean... The, the powers to be, the global elite, if they know that this is coming down the line is going to happen, why do they continue to do what they're doing, knowing that they don't have a, a chance in surviving it anyway? Well, they are insane themselves too. Their, their mind is fracturing, you see, and they don't know any other way. Uh, what eventually they'll do is, uh, like, uh, blow up the whole planet if they can. And they may with this nuclear war coming. They did it in Vulcan, who is one of the planets that now forms the um, the, uh, the the belt there of um, excuse me all those uh, asteroids uh, between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, th these people, these are demons. They're insane. They don't know what else to do. They have no answers. See, their hands are tied. They can't escape. They can't get anywhere. They can't get their own way. Um, their minds are fracturing. They can't get the energy they want, no matter how much they bomb people and kill people. Before that, they were able to harness that energy to survive. Mm -hmm. Now, they know they're dying spiritually as, as much as they are spiritual. Uh, and and they start, they're starting to realize that they're doomed. And this is exactly what's happening. And that they will get worse and worse and worse. They don't know what to do. They're fighting each other. They're actually in, as I described in, on my website, they're in self-destructive mode. Have you noticed what they're doing in the Middle East? They're actually bombing ISIS, which they created, and ISIS is, you know, it's a huge mess. They don't know what they're doing yeah, because yeah. They, they know there's no escape. There's no answer to this. And, for example, the United States is making things a lot worse. All it does is print money, thinking that will somehow solve things. It's only making things worse and worse and worse. Mm. And everything you... must eventually collapse, which it's, it's going to. But not only just humanity, nature is collapsing, the seas are collapsing, you know, vegetation is collapsing. As I told you, animals are disappearing. Mm. There are signs of the end. There's nothing humans can do to stop that.
Well, the Irish, the Irish government is doing the same thing, Dr. Joseph. Our, our government has just lost the plot big time, and everybody's waking up to the greed and corruption of the government. And they, they, they are running around like headless chickens trying to sort the problem out, and there's no solution. But the problem is, is obviously we have the military and the, and the Gardaí, the police, who are actually taking their side because they feel they have to. That's right. Not only that, in the end time, all evil will be exposed. And that's what's happening. We are starting to see the evil and corruption in all these uh, iconic institutions. And not only that, in the end time, we're all going to get our psychic abilities back and we'll know who is who. A lot of uh, my students and people are already seeing who are demons, who are robots and who are Bibles. And you can do that. You can recognize them. You can see the demonic essence. Some people can actually see the reptilians in their eyes and so on. We have to know who is who in the end time. Okay. This is being okay. prophesied. We have about 10 minutes left, and we're going to do a quick fire on some of the questions. We'll try and get as much as we can in. If you can give us near enough a one-line answer, if possible, um, in the 10 minutes, because we'll try and get them in. That would be fantastic. Steve? Yeah, okay, I won't waste any time. I'm just going to jump straight into them. Uh, in relation to that question earlier of the, the Gnostics from Chris, Chris uh, also added to that question. He says, John Lamb Lash has done a lot of great work on the Gnostic text, but he doesn't seem to mention the end. Why, why so? Well, um, I don't know much about John Lash, but uh, I don't think he knows anything about Gnosticism anyway, even though he writes about it. Okay, okay, <laughs> fair question, or fair, fair answer. Um, Eric is wondering, please ask Dr. Joseph, can we defend ourselves against demonic beings with any power we have? Is that going to cause, or is that going to cause a knock-on effect or problems? No, they are far more powerful in the physical than we are. There is no way we can stop them. They do what they like, if you notice. They, they, they do exactly what they want. The, the, our, our victory comes from uh, being liberated, if we're viable, and seeing them totally destroyed. That's what we've been praying for since the beginning of this era. Okay. Don't go against them. They'll, they'll destroy your family. They'll destroy you. Uh, you know, they'll put you to death. They'll, they'll do anything. They are far too powerful. That's what they were created for, to keep us harnessed on this level. But how, course, do you, how do you keep away from them? Well, you just obey the rules. You, you, you hide yourself. You know, you don't rock the boat, but you go within and you know what to do and what not to do, and you wait for the end. Okay. Look at what they've okay. done to every avatar that's come down on this level. They've destroyed them by crucifixion, by skinning them alive, by burning them at the stake, you know, by targeting them in every way they can. So just don't go against them. You can't win on this level against them. They are far too powerful. Okay. Oh, well, that will tie into what John Irwin said last week on the show. He said the same thing about the, these people, you know, um, in different ways. Right, any more questions there? Yep. Uh, TZ on the chat is also wondering, uh, um, Doc, Dr. Joseph, in your claims of the global thermonuclear war prediction, has the alignment of the planets got anything to do with the wars? Um, the answer is yes and no. Um, no, in the sense that the, the, the war is going to occur anyway. It's been planned for a long, long time. There's an energy pattern that will precipitate into nuclear war once they developed it. Um, and, and secondly, it's part of their mindset that they, they're self-destructive. And the quickest way they'll self-destroy is by nuclear war. These people are insane. They, they don't think... Uh, they think it's a good thing. They think they will survive in their underground bunkers and that way they'll get rid of most of humanity. That's the, their mentality. They haven't got any spiritual insight whatsoever. So what we say is, look, do what you like. Destroy yourselves. The viables are out of here. Okay, well, we'll have to put a um, request in that. If, the, uh, if there's going to be a pick-up point for viables, can you give us a shout if that happens, and we'll make sure we're available, I think. <laughs> oh. Yes, this is why I said to go inside. If, if you're meant to be one of those to be picked up, you will get directions. You will be guided somewhere. Now, just understand that most will not be uh, picked up in that way. <clears throat> most will physically die off. And as this occurs to you, as the danger comes, you just say, look, this is just a means to an end. This has happened many, many times. But the whole idea is not to try and get too fearful. And you'll, you'll worry about your pets as well and things like that and say, no, 
this is just part of uh, the exercise where we will be liberated towards a, a divine dimension. I know it's difficult, uh, but people have to work on themselves and be rid of fear. What's the situation uh, with, with children? Um, uh, that's a difficult one. I don't want to offend anyone, but since 1999, uh, no theomorph has reincarnated. So the children can either be uh, of the robotic kind, and they can be one of two, viable or non-viable, or demonic. Okay. And, and, and the demonic includes those star children I mentioned. But no, you treat everyone as if they're viable, okay? This is an important point we have to make. If you are a divine being, a viable divine being, you manifest love at all times. Whether the person that you give the love to can appreciate it or not is not your concern. But you at all times remain a divine loving being. Is that not so? You yeah. don't get angry. You don't try to fight. You don't try to kill anybody. You don't try to steal. You don't try to rape or anything. You manifest love at all times. Now, most of them will not respond to that. That's their problem. And if you're in a situation there where they don't respond, move on. Find better friends. Find the odd one that will respond. And, and because in the end time, they did say, like will go to like. Okay. We will okay. go to the ones that are of the same energy. So okay. At all times, you manifest that Christ consciousness within you. Well, that's, that's good to know. We, we, we have three questions left, and we're going to quick forward them over to you there. Yeah, actually, two, two of them are kind of uh, fairly simple. They, they really only require a yes or no answer. Uh, the force of those is from Mr. T. Mr. T was wondering, um, Joseph, is or was Jesus real? Is what, sorry? Is or was, is, is Jesus real? Yes, Jesus was a man that lived in the Middle East who in whom the Christ consciousness descended at the age of 30. Yes, he was the avatar for his time. And then he had, he had re, uh, been Buddha before in India, that, that Christ consciousness, and later on, that class four reincarnated as Manichaeus and then as King Arthur in, in England. Yes, Jesus is real. Of course he's real. He, he's a being, a class four being. But the Christ consciousness, the light of the Christ consciousness, can be in anyone. As he said, everything I can do, you can do. Once you purify enough, you can accept that Christ consciousness. And the avatar that comes in each generation has splinters of that consciousness in other people. Okay. Can you understand that concept? Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah, well, of course, Jesus, Jesus is real. He's one of the divine beings. He's, he's one of the avatars of that time. But he was also others. He kept reincarnating. This is what people don't understand. And this is where the religions did a, a dirty job trying to say he was the one and only in order to trap people. Okay, well, listen, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry we didn't get to the rest of the questions, but we just ran out of time. But, um, Dr. Joseph, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's much appreciated. Um, great information there to take away and to uh, think about and digest and go and do research. I'm going to pass you over to Steve. Steve's going to get all your contact information so you can let people know where they can find you. Steve. Yeah, Joseph, it's been great information, as you say, yeah, people, people can listen to it. They can take what they want out of it. it it's, it's entirely up to them. But you're just, you're just, uh, you're just laying it out there for, for everyone to, to know. We do have a, your website. I have posted that up in the chat. It's jchipalone.com. www.jchipalone.com. Uh, is there any other mediums where people can find out more? I know you have some YouTube stuff as well, but uh, could you want to promote maybe the website or any other way people can contact you or find out more about your work? Yes. Oh, oh, it on the website, there's my email address. There are also many, many shows that I've done in America. Um, there, are, there are YouTube URLs that take a look. Um, uh, good and bad, they can Google my name. You'll, you'll get good and bad stuff about me, of course. Just, just you have to make up your own mind and what you want to believe. This is the important message I want to leave the people with. They, they can listen to me, but they, don't, they shouldn't believe anything I say. They should believe what their inner light tells them to believe. Exactly. Okay. I, I, I couldn't be fairer than that. No, that's fair yeah. enough. All right, Dr. Oh, Joseph, no. just stay with us there for a minute, and uh, we're just going to a musical break, and we'll be back after this. Thank you.
This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. Top Gun, drop it again. I was going to sing it there, Ron. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, just again, it's Alan's top forty. You just, I just pulled one out. The I night. know it's your birthday tomorrow, but come on, wham. There's nothing wrong with a bit of wham. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, a little bit of club, club, club Tropicana. Uh, I do apologise earlier on. I was a little bit slow in switching the mic off. So, uh, yeah. Embarrassed here. Uh, you know, make allowances anyway. I'm only human, allegedly. Well, it'll come out of the mix anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyone listening to the podcast will go, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Brilliant guest, Dr. Joseph Chipolone. In Australia, we'll get him on for part two. So much information to talk about. Sorry, there's a couple of questions we didn't get to, but we knew there'd be loads of questions when we get a guest on who talks about this kind of subject. There's loads of questions come in. So, and fair play to him. I mean, he's a straight talking guy, and he says, "Look, take it or leave it. Doesn't matter. You know, whatever you, whatever way you see it." So, and fair play to him for doing that. There's a lot of things that he said that other people we've had on and other people that I've researched and listen to said the same thing so you know take that for what it is but anyway we just said that we would do alan's week and steve's week and um, we needed a bit of time to do that so basically how's your week steve uh, uh <laughs> I'll, I'll sum it up fairly quickly um yeah no i've been watching w- watching the uh anti-social media facebook with all the videos coming up of the protests and the guardy and just the way they're just beating the you know what other people and just being so violent and i think even if the guards were to suddenly have a moment of clarity and they 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 just decide you know what we'll take off our uniform well not uniform our our helmets or whatever and we we side with the people i think it's too much too late i think the damage has been done i think every every man woman and child on this island has lost respect for a lot of the members of angarda shiakana because they they really proven themselves that they're not there being uh, guardians of the peace. They're they're there to protect private companies, and I think it's so evident these days. I actually had to stop. I had to start skipping past the videos because I was watching so many of these videos, and it was getting to the stage where I was I was getting I was I was annoyed. I was angry. I was upset, and I had to stop. So so now I mean I'm just kind of I'm going through them, and uh, I'm I'm just some of them I'm just. I'm just bypassing. Like, I can't watch them. Uh, the, the other thing I want to mention too, which is the last thing I want to mention because we are kind of stuck for time, um, there is a new media that has popped up. It's Well, I don't know how long it's actually been active. It's VK.com. It's, it's kind of like Facebook, but it's run in Russia, I believe. So it's under the kind of the guys are under the, the auspices of Putin and his, his, uh, his cronies. I don't know. I don't know how, how um, anonymous it actually is, but it's claiming to be you know the place the place to be uh, as an alternative to facebook i have set up an account i know a lot of other people have too uh, i was kind of concerned when they wanted my mobile phone number in order for me to to invite friends i had to give them to my mobile phone so uh, yeah i didn't I haven't done that yet but uh, i've i've signed up i know a lot of the groups that are on facebook namely the hub the hub is a great group here in republic of ireland they're they're really out there they're doing great trojan work in you know uh, helping people with repossessions and stuff like that uh, they've they've set up a page over there, so it kind of seems to be the place to be as an alternative because from what we're hearing, Facebook is going to be getting censored, and uh, well, it's already being censored. People are having posts removed left, right, and center, and I suppose the videos will be next. We did hear that with YouTube as well. They're going to start pulling videos uh, of the protests. So we're going to uh, see the call up a little log here. We are going to you know check we we'll check it out anyway, uh, and one of our posters earlier. Uh, gave us a link and I'm gonna just I'm gonna repost it in again. It's a connecting dot community. It's a local community connection system. It allows anyone to find like local like minded people in your own area. Uh, it's not a dating site. I'm pretty sure it's just for uh, you know the likes of people like 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 us who want to communicate with other people in their area. So I'll just post it in the chat room there. I'll check it out later. So make of it what you wish. That's my week. Alan, how was your week? Not too bad. As I said last week, we would pop down to, I was heading down to Trim Court to help out and see on behalf of the Land League, um, just to see if we could help anybody down there. And I'm pleased to say that um, we did grab a few people who were just up against the wall, basically, with the bank. And they were in court. 
they didn't even know what the procedure was they didn't know what the defense was they just were in there one guy we spoke to a couple <clears throat> the guy said he hadn't slept for three days um, just worrying about the actual court case and he thought he'd be going in to see the judge and his house would be taken off him and we kind of educated them to the fact that uh, basically it was a registrar and that it was his first time there so chances are the court case was going to be adjourned and it was till April so we we sat down had to talk to him gave him the land league information and he was he went there with his wife much happier and there's a few other people that we spoke to there gave it leaflets talked to educated and it was great to, uh, the, the cases were adjourned till April so they're in their homes till April anyway and now they have they know how to kind of who to contact and sit down and just chat to and get some, you know, kind of defence together so they didn't stay in the home. So that was a good result there last week in Trim Circuit Court. And I believe the, the hub were in Mullingar doing the same thing on the same day. So that's brilliant. So it is working and it is coming together. The other thing I've seen during the week, I'm sure you've all seen it, is Andy Kenny doing some talk at a 1916 anniversary launch party. And the girl goes up and calls him a few, calls him a parasite, funny enough. And then there's a few choice, one or two swear words gone in there, which is, um, you know, my pe- pe- people will have their different opinion on it, but, you know, these people don't deserve respect. These politicians don't deserve their respect. I don't care because they just, they just don't. And the last thing that's on the list for my week was basically I was watching Russia Today and I'm very disappointed that Russia Today, but not really showing the protests going on in Ireland and the people waking up and everything that's happening. And the other morning, yesterday morning, I believe, I was watching Russia Today, and they started talking about, and this was in Ireland, right? They were talking about a gay bull that the people wanted to save from the farmer going to the slaughter because the, the gay bull doesn't want to actually go near the females. And they've raised €3,000 to save the bull. And there was nothing on mortar meters. Um, and I thought, talk about stereotyping the Irish. I mean, it was a really typical stereotyping the Irish. So I had to send off an email to the press office in Russia today. And I sent them a few links. And I just said, <laughs> look, there's a lot of things going on in Ireland more important than a gay bull. All right? <laughs> now, I don't have anything against gay bulls, but I just think there's more important things going on in Ireland besides a gay bull. So, um, yeah, so it was quite entertaining. So that was really, really my week. What can I say? <clears throat> but good results in Trim Court, as I said. And we'll go down there again. We'll hand out the leaflets. And we'll have a... Um, try and help out as many people as we can regarding... Because we all could be in the situation, you know, shortly. Or maybe in a few months' time. We could be all there. So it's it's that's what it's all about. It's all about help, helping each other. As best we can. Now I just want to make this announcement again. Which I made at the start of the show. There's going to be an event on tomorrow evening. We can't give out the information. But we need people there. Who can be at that location. As protesters. There's going to be short notice. So watch out. Watch Facebook. Watch the social media. And it will be put out more than likely tomorrow. It's going to be a last minute thing. But if you can get there and protest. Then uh, that'd be brilliant if you can because it's going to be an important event and it'd be great to see protesters there but we can't give out any details just yet we've been under um, under under strict instructions strict instructions, strict not, instructions. To give out, not to give out any information so well, but I'm guessing it will, be, it will be available on, on social media tomorrow won't it oh, it should be out on social media tomorrow yeah definitely um, and then the word be, the word be uh, pushed out there so um, just keep an eye on that social media Facebook, as I said as early on the show, was just hopping all day. It's been hopping all day. So many people waking up and seeing what's going on. Videos being passed around. And the disgusting people who are just waking up and seeing it and going, I don't believe this. This is unbelievable what's going on. And even mentions of one Facebook thread, they wanted to apologise to Jim Corr. Because when they seen Jim four years ago on the Late Late Show... They thought he was a nutter, and now they realise that actually what Jim was saying was pretty much on on the money. And a lot of people said that that they'd like to uh, apologise to Jim, and um, fair play. But that's what happens when you wake up and see what's what's going on, you know. Yeah, I think Jim was ahead of his time for 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 some of the people. They had they hadn't quite woken up yet, but 
you know, as we, we've said before, people will wake up when they're ready. You, all you can do is give them the information. They will ridicule you. Uh, that's one thing I found out uh, very personally. They will ridicule you when you give them the information. But, you know, a couple of years later, they'll have their own awakening and they will come and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll laugh at, they'll laugh at, you know, the way they went on and they'll all just get on with it. Well, yeah, and hopefully by waking up we can make a make a change. Yeah. Now, we don't have any guests booked on for next week because I have a couple of emails gone out and I'm waiting on replies to come back. One of the guests that I'm hoping to have on, not next week, but in a couple of weeks' time, is Michael Tassarian. Um So, Michael, and we're just working with Michael at the moment, just working out times and, and dates and stuff. But so, so far, he's kind of agreed to be on the show. So, um, Michael should be on. And there's a couple of other emails. So we don't know who's going to be on next week, but you can be guaranteed it's going to be good anyway. It's it going could, to be fun. It could be you. It could be you. <laughs> Have you paid and your TV <laughs> license? If so, it could be you. <laughs> so it could be entertaining. Who's on with Vin tonight, Steve? I'm glad you asked, because you know I already know the answer, because Vin gave us the details earlier. Yeah, guest, Vin's guest tonight is going to be Mark Devlin. Uh, Mark was a host on People's Voice. That's the, uh, the TV station. I'm not even sure if that's still going. Uh, but he was a host there. He's now going to be taking a Friday night slot on People's Internet Radio from 11pm to 1pm. Uh, Vin says he will also be joined by Christina from uh, Ingle, Ingle, something the heron, something the heron. And as an extra special treat, the one and only Johnny Maeve. Nice guy, Johnny. We met, I think we met Johnny in Kelsey. We did, yeah. yeah okay. Nice, nice guy. Well, it's near that time, so we'll pass over to uh, Vin of PIR, yeah. and uh, have a safe week. Thanks again for all the emails, and the emails coming in, thanking us for what, we're do- what we do. Um, you know, as I say, we have a moral conscience, and it's to get the information out there. We're two guys with two microphones, that's all we are, and we just kind of talk about what, what's going on, really, that's what it is. And we've no illusions to be anything more than two guys <laughs> with two microphones. That's the plan of attack. And a mixing desk. <laughs> and a mixing desk and as well. Access. And that helps. And a few of the bits and pieces we won't go into detail with. Yes. All right. Have a safe week, everyone. And uh, as I say, we don't know who the guest is on next week. Watch it. Watch the schedule and we'll, uh, you'll be able to find out from there. Till next week, this is Alan James saying, take it easy, stay safe, catch you later. Bye-bye. Right, and everything everything he said, and I, I double it. Uh, right, come on, we do it all again next week. I know we are tied for time. Stay tuned for Vin on People's Internet Radio. And uh, thanks for the birthday wishes. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, have a, I'll raise a glass for you tonight. It'll be a yeah, fil- happy, happy birthday. Filtered water. Thanks very much. Right, good night. We'll do it again in seven days. Take care. Bye-bye. Open your mind.